Hey everybody, Paul Link here with another physics problem solved. Uh, this is the channel where I solve the physics homework problems provided to me by my tutoring clients. Take a look at the video description for a way to get in contact with me if you need a private physics tutor. My rates are reasonable and I'm, I'm pretty good. And if you find this video helpful, please give it a like. Do me a favor, give me a like. Share it with uh, your, your classmates or what our students and subscribe to my channel. And so let's, uh, hey, let's get to today's problem. Um, it's, a, it's an electrostatics problem. And we've got two charged metal spheres uh, that are going to be connected by a wire. And these are the ideas you should be somewhat familiar with uh, before we get started. Uh, the potential difference of a charged metal sphere. Okay, you should also understand what the phrase electrostatic condition means. Because I'll be using that. And I'll explain it, but... It's good if you're familiar with it. And we'll talk about equipotential surfaces as well. Um, now, let's read through the problem. Uh, metal, uh, metal sphere A of radius 13 centimeters carries a nine microcombs, carries nine microcombs of charge. And a metal sphere B has a radius of 23 centimeters and carries negative one microcombs of charge. If the two spheres are attached, are then attached by a very long conducting thread, what is the final distribution of charge on the two spheres? Okay, so my suggestion is, pause the video now, try to do this problem yourself, unpause the video uh, to compare your work with mine, help you get unstuck, and so on. So anyway, let's set this up. Given, what, what do we know? Well, we have A, Sphere uh, A. Okay. So here's sphere A. And we know that it has a radius of 13 centimeters, which we'll probably, we might be changing that to meters. I don't know. And we know that there's initially a charge on it. I'll go ahead and show this charge on it. Of... 9 microcoulombs. So the charge, the initial charge anyway on A is 9, and remember micro times 10 to the negative 6, 9 microcoulombs of charge. And then way over here, I've got a slightly bigger sphere. This is radius, uh, and this, uh, and we'll call this B. And it has a radius of 23 centimeters. And it has a charge, its initial charge anyway, is um, negative one microcoulomb. Okay. And so let's put a little bit of negative charge, smear it all over that. Now, what we're going to do is this. Uh, this is before, and then uh, and then after. This is. I'll put this before, and then after. Then we're going to take these two spheres. Let me draw them again. And and they've got charge on them, right? Sorry, I'm going to get trying to go too fast, getting sloppy here. We're going to connect them with a little tiny thin metal thread. Now what's that going to do? Well, that the, here we've got positive charge. It's attracted to this negative charge. And so charge is going to flow through this wire to get to that other sphere. And what we want to know is, is at the end, here's what we're trying to find. I'll put it to find over here. We want to find the final charge. It says, what is the final distribution of charge on the two spheres? Well, how much charge is on A at the end? And how much charge is on sphere B at the end? After current stops flowing. Now, I want to talk about what I mean by an electrostatic condition. Electrostatic condition means that you're looking at the situation when charge isn't flowing anymore. So now this before is an electrostatic condition, okay? Because uh, the charges aren't moving. 
Now I connect them to the wire. Now for a period of time, positive charge is gonna flow over here to over here. But at some point, the charge is gonna stop flowing. And what we wanna know is what is the charge on B and what is the charge on A after they stop, um, after that, that, after the charge has reached um, some kind of equilibrium so it's not moving anymore. Uh, and, we, and we once again have an electrostatic condition. So we start off with an electrostatic condition. I put a wire in there, I get a little burst of current as this equalizes out. And then uh, I, I, I have an electrostatic condition again. Now let's solve it. I'll st st solve it right here. Now, I've got two unknowns here. But here's one thing I know. The total amount of charge in this system isn't changing. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the total charge is going to be a constant. Now, that total charge, well, on A, right, we have, well, that's going to be the, the, the charge on A plus the charge on B. And so this is, uh, well, the charge on A is given to be 9 microcoulombs, and then B has negative 1 microcoulombs. And when you add these together, the total charge, total, is 9 plus negative 1 is 8 microcoulombs. Okay, so QA plus QB is equal to 8 microcoulombs. So I know, so this is true. Now, it's also true, oh, but, okay, yeah, that's fine. It's also true that at the end, I'm still going to have a total of eight microcoulombs, but now they're going to be shared this way. So Q total is going to be, um, so Q total is also going to be, well, it, well, that's equal to eight microcoulombs, but it's also equal to QA final plus QA initial. I'm um, QA, QB final, I'm sorry. QB final. Okay. So QA initial plus QB initial is 8 microcoulombs. Well, when you add up the charge, you're still going to have the same amount of charge. You have conservation of charge. This charge can't go anywhere, right? It's, it's constrained to move through this system. And so it's, so, so if I started with 8 microcoulombs of net charge, I'm going to end with 8 microcoulombs of net charge. Okay. And I know that this is 8 microcoulombs. Now uh, here, this is really what I wanted to draw a bubble around because these are my two unknowns, right? This is what I'm trying to find. But I need another equation. I've got one equation and two unknowns. So now we're going to use another idea because what is true, once, once I let the charge flow through, you know, from A to B, and I'm, I'm going to actually have some positive charge on B, and some positive charge left on A, I suppose. Yeah, of course I will. But what's what's happening? When when, do, when does the charge stop flowing? Okay, right. So so A has lots of positive charge. B has a little bit of negative charge. So A, you know, these positive charges are trying to get away from each other, right? So they push each other down this wire until they can't be pushed anymore. Now, what has to be true for this? these charges to stop moving from A to B. Well, when do charges not move anymore? When there's no longer a potential difference between one location and another. Because what's happened, this is metal. So this is metal, this is all metal, and this is metal, and this is metal. So charges are free to move on on uh, on a metal, right? That's what makes metal metal is that it conducts electricity. So when you have a metal that's all one continuous thing, and 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 you have an electrostatic condition, then the voltage 
or the potential difference is everywhere the same. You can't have a potential difference on the surface of a metal if you have an electrostatic condition. Because what if there was a... So what I'm saying is that at the surface of A, the, the potential difference V of A on this surface has to be equal to the potential on B. They have to be equal. Because if they weren't equal, you would still have charge flowing between them because it's a potential difference across a conductor that makes a current flow. But we're saying that current isn't flowing anymore. So if current isn't flowing anymore, we have the same potential on all of these surfaces, the, the same electric potential on all these surfaces. So the surface of the metal is often called an equipotential surface. Equa means equal, equal potential among all the surfaces, on all, all the surfaces on that metal. Okay, because, I'll say it once more, because if there was a potential difference between A and B, that would force, because you've connected it with a wire, that would force a current to flow. And you would no longer have an electrostatic condition. Okay, I think I've said that three times now, so I'll move on. Well, I, you know, the, this, they, they said that this is a really long wire um, by a very long conducting thread. Now, what, what they mean by very long is that the electric fields of A and the electric field of B are not distorting anything. They're kind of like, you know, so, so what that means, if that, well, I know what, what the voltage for A is at this surface, right? It's K times the charge on A divided by the radius of A. Now, if you haven't seen this equation before, you should, and I, maybe I should have listed it here, look up the voltage due to a point charge. Because if you have a sphere, outside the sphere, it acts as if it's a point charge. And so the potential outside a point charge is KQ over R, where R is the distance from the center of that point charge out to your location in space. Well, where is our location in space? Oh, it's at the surface of this charged sphere. So that's so we can still treat it like it's a point charge located right there, and then this is my location. So this is the voltage, my potential difference at that surface. And, and now same logic for B. Now, um, I think one thing we can see here is that, uh, oh, and they, these are the final charges. And look, here I have an equation with the same two unknowns as this equation. So I've got two, equa two separate independent equations and two unknowns. So now, now it's just algebra. Now it's just algebra to solve. So let's go through that. First of all, the electric constant is on both sides, so it's going to cancel out. And let's solve for QB. So QB final, why did I put a C there? I had to put a final. QB final is equal to QA final, and then multiply by R sub B over R sub A. Okay, so I just I just basically I solve for this. This times this divided by that, cross multiply and divide, right? Okay. Well now what this means. I can substitute this into here. So let's do that. So I know that 8 microcombs is equal to QA final plus QA final. Oh, was I off screen? I'm sorry for that. I wasn't paying attention. All right, um, QA final times... RB over RA. And uh, so now I can uh, I can factor out QA final, and that's going to be equal to um, oh, what am I doing? Sorry. I'm gonna I'm gonna factor it out. And so what I'm left with is one plus RB over RA. And that's going to equal 8 microcombs. 
So now I can solve for QA final. And let's just plug in the values now. So this is going to be 8 microcombs divided by this 1 plus RB, but RB is 23 centimeters, and RA is 13 centimeters. And I, I don't need to change them to meters because the units cancel out right here. So it really is, if you change it to meters, it, you get the same exact answer. Okay, and so if you plug this into your calculator, um, and which I did, you get 2.89 microcombs. So that's QA. Now QB is going to be equal to the, the total charge minus QA. So that's going to be 8 microcombs. So I'm just going to solve for QB final here. And it's 8 microcombs minus QA, which is minus 2.89 microcombs. And we'll get, so QB final is equal to 5.11 microcombs. So let's just say, say our, our answer here. QA final is 2.89 microcoulombs, and QB final is 5.11 microcoulombs. Okay, and there's our answer. Cool. Okay, so here's the whole thing. So, um, hey, if you found this helpful, uh, Give it a like, you know, and uh, share it with the, uh, maybe you have some friends that are taking your physics with you. Share share this with them and, um, and subscribe to the channel. It'd be great. Help me out. And um, I make, uh, I don't know, I'm trying to make, you know, a couple videos a week or so. So, and uh, leave a comment if I made a mistake or uh, if you have a question, um, leave it in the comments. And, and you can also, uh, if you have a, a physics problem, that you would like solved, uh, write it up in the comments and uh, and maybe I'll make a video out of it and I'll let you know. In any case, thank you for listening and until the next video, may the net force be with you always. That is all.